Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the plane mirror in physics optics. So the plane mirror is the easiest kind of mirror we have, as opposed to the concave and the convex mirrors that come after this. However, the only reason I say it's the easiest is because it's heavy with the geometry. So if you're good with geometry, then this is gonna be fine. If you struggle with geometry, then I'm gonna help you through this video. So first with the plane mirror, here's what's going on. Here I am looking at my mirror in the bathroom, let's say, and wherever I look, like let's say like this, the plane mirror is going to bounce off perfectly symmetrically and the ray is going to go that way. And one thing that's always true with the plane mirror, wherever it bounces off, there is a perfectly perpendicular line to the mirror. And these two angles, I'll call it theta and theta, they are equal to each other. And we're also going to be dealing with a lot of right triangles here. So hopefully you remember your Sokotoa and your Pythagorean theorem. So let's go ahead and look at some examples with the plane mirror. First, I'm standing next to a very tall building. And let's say there is an equally tall mirror standing across from the building. It doesn't have to be a mirror. For instance, you can just see the reflection in one of the windows in the building across the street. But anyways, me and the building are both located 20 feet away from the mirror, which I'm just saying it's a plain mirror. And when I'm looking up at the mirror and the ray bounces off so I can see the top, that angle that I'm looking at is exactly 60 degrees, let's say. And so maybe this isn't the best picture because I want this line to go further because me and the building are standing at the same point. But I'm saying this is 60 degrees, that's 20 feet. And the question is, I want to find the height of the building. So there's no strict formulas with the plane mirror, but here's what I know instantly before I do any math. There's something called alternate interior angles in geometry, and it's going to be this one. So remember that the perpendicular line right there, this angle's theta, this angle's theta. And what I'm saying is the 60 degrees and theta are alternate interior angles, meaning they are equal to each other. And so that means just about every angle here is 60 degrees. These are also gonna be right triangles right here. And finally, if I wanna find the total height, then I just need to look at one of these two triangles. I'll choose the bottom one. So it's the one that looks like this. This angle's 60 degrees at the top. This is a right angle. And just to be clear, I'm looking at this triangle here. Now, I know the top of this triangle because the top is the same as the bottom, it's 20 feet. And if I wanna find the height, which I'll call X, then it looks like I'm using tangent because it's the opposite leg and the adjacent leg and I don't have the hypotenuse. So tangent 60 equals opposite X over adjacent 20. Multiply both sides by 20 and X is gonna be 20 times tangent 60 and that's gonna be x equals 34.6. Now I'm not circling this because this is not the height of the building. This is just the height of the red portion right here. Now because everything is symmetrical with the plane mirror, and I know I didn't draw this to scale, but this triangle is one half the height and this triangle is also one half the height. So if I just double the height I just got, that's gonna give me the total height because each triangle is one half the total height. So times two and I'll get a final height of 69.3 and that's feet because that's the units I'm working with and there we go that's how we solve that one so as you can see a lot of geometry a lot of right triangles and a lot of Sokotoa so two more to look at today so now let's say I'm standing here on the ground and I see a tree nearby and I want to find the height of this tree so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put a mirror in between us so that when I look down at the mirror, I position it properly so I can see the top of the tree. I know a few distances. For instance, I can easily measure my height, which let's say is six feet. I can measure my distance to the mirror, which I'll say is five feet. And I can measure the distance from the mirror to the tree, which is 20 feet. And from just this information, I can find the height of this tree. How will I do it? So I want you to give it a try first when you give up unpause the video and see how I do it. So the first thing I do is I say, I don't know the angle, but I know these angles theta will be equal to each other. 
I am then going to solve for the right triangle first because I have enough to solve for theta. In other words, I have the opposite leg and the adjacent leg, so it looks like it's going to be tangent again. Tangent of theta equals opposite leg 6 over adjacent 5. If I want to solve for theta, I'm just taking the inverse tangent of both sides. And so I'll get an angle of theta equals 50.2 degrees. And because I know that angle is 50.2, I also know this angle is 50.2 degrees. And now I'm just going to focus on that right triangle, where this angle is 50.2, the base is 20, and I want to find the height. So it looks like it's tangent again. Seems like it's tangent every time. Now I'm not going to say it's always tangent, depends on the problem, but tangent shows up a lot. So tangent's going to be opposite over adjacent, h over 20. So then h equals 20 tangent of 50.2 degrees. So I plug that in my calculator, and I'll get exactly 24 feet. And there's the height of the tree. Easy peasy. Now we're going to do one more. This will be the hardest example by far. So this time, I'm going to be looking. This is my eye. And I'm going to be looking at a plane mirror. And it's the same setup as before, except this time the distances are going to be pretty tough. So I want to look at the flame of a candle right here. I know my eye is three meters away from the mirror, and I know the candle is five meters away from the mirror, and I know the total distance from the candle to my eye, I know this entire distance is 10 meters. And my question is, what angle theta right here do I have to look down at to see the flame perfectly in the mirror? So this one's tough. It kind of involves a system of equations. So I'll let you give it a try, but don't be surprised if you don't get this one right. And so here's what we're going to do. First, I have two triangles. Once again, this triangle here and this triangle right here. I will say that through a series of alternate interior angles from geometry, there are a lot of thetas going on here that I do know. So even though I don't know the angle, I know that all four of these angles are the same. This is a right triangle. That's a right triangle. Now, if I want to find theta, first I need to give these two different variables. Let's call this top height x and this bottom height y. And so if I focus on just the top triangle, just the red one, then this distance is 3, this angle is theta, and this distance is x. I know that I'm going to use tangent again because it's opposite over adjacent, and I'm going to get x over 3. That's it. I'm stuck on that triangle. Now if I move to the bottom one, I know that the base is 5, this is theta, and I'm calling this y. So then that means, again, tangent theta equals y over 5 now. And I have too many unknown variables. I don't know theta, I don't know x, and I don't know y. That's three unknown variables. That means I need at least three equations. And it just so happens the last equation comes from the fact that in this picture, x plus y equals 10. There. Now I have three equations, I can solve for whatever I want. So let's go ahead and solve for y first in this equation. y is going to equal 10 minus x. I'm then going to plug that into the tangent theta one right here. So tan theta equals 10 minus x over 5. And then because both of these are tangent theta from both triangles, I can set the tangent thetas equal to each other. In other words, 10 minus x over 5 equals x over 3. Now I just have to cross multiply, so I get 10 minus x times 3 equals 5x. Distribute the 3 over, 30 minus 3x equals 5x. Add 3x to both sides, 30 equals 8x, and x is going to equal whatever 30 divided by 8 is. So 3.75. Now this is not the answer, and if I want I can find y very easily now. y is 10 minus 3.75, which is 6.25. But honestly, that's not even important. What's important is I need to solve for theta. So going back to my first red right triangle, where this is theta, this is 3, and we just said x was 3.75. Now I can solve for theta. Tan theta equals 3.75 divided by 3. And theta equals the inverse tangent of that plug that in a calculator, and we'll get theta equals 51.3 degrees, and that is the answer to our question. 
So I know that was a tough one, but hopefully it makes sense now. If you have any questions on plane mirrors or any of the problems we did today, please post them in the comments below. Thank you all for watching, have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care and bye bye